It's our fourth one now. Episode four. Welcome. No jet ski. No jet ski today. Aaron, how are you doing? Another abrupt stop. <laughs> I was going to fake. No copyright. In- <laughs> no copyright infringements this week. Yeah, last week we got a copyright for using another YouTuber's work. <laughs> so <laughs> we should. We should I'll, I'll a, to one. Yeah, we should give a shout out to the uh, YouTubers that we're using. Yeah, I'll um, I'll thingy, I'll reach out to them. I'll put them in uh, all the descriptions of the ones that we've. I think we use them for two episodes. I'll give put them in the descriptions and reach out to them, see if we're allowed, if they'll allow us to use it. Do they get a notification when you put them in the description? I don't have a clue. I, I suppose so, because it tags them, so. Mm. But I don't think they've been active, because it says they've not been active for about eight years. Like, the last okay. episode was eight years old. Eight years. Um, I'm getting copyright infringements. And the tunes are like, better than the most tunes that you hear today. Yeah. Give them a shout out, then. On this app. Yeah, just, just say what, what his name is. I need to find YouTube it. Channel. It's... Uh... Because he does produce some good music. I'll tag him in the description of this one too. His name. Piss me off. Whoa. DJ TB. <laughs> later just automatically played. Uh, what was his name? DJ T Beats. T E E Beats. Yeah, he does. Oh. He produced some good music, man. So. How's your week been since yeah, last good. week? Went to a wedding in uh, Carlisle. Very nice. That was a bit of a mission up from London. Four, uh, four and a half hours to Preston, then two and a half, uh, two hours to Carlisle. What if you did it one trip, didn't stop in Preston? Did you check? Yeah, I think it's around six hour, the six hour mark. Six hours, okay. Yeah. So it's good to stop off in Preston, breaks it up. Literally one side of the country to the other. Yeah. You're kind of north London, right? So. Yeah, like north east London. It's cost more as east though. But, uh, yeah, it's my birthday as well, so it's good to see the family back home. Oh, yeah. We forgot birthday to give us a shout out. Last Tuesday. When last we recorded week. our last video, but I didn't get, get a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> we wished him happy birthday before we started recording <laughs> and then as soon as we stopped recording said oh shit we forgot to wish you happy birthday should have worn my uh, birthday badge <laughs> should have put that party out on <laughs> really yeah how was your week uh good didn't really get up to too much had a bit of a quiet week um i guess it's becoming a thing where i tell people what films i've been watching i've been watching uh james bond from the beginning i know we've talked about watching them oh, yeah. before did you watch Dr. No? Yeah. Watched Dr. No and then watched with Russia, from Russia with Love. Oh, yeah. I. Um, go on. Go on. You. And then I'm part, well, I'm halfway through Goldfinger at the moment. Oh, okay. I watched, I, I try, I was going to do what you're doing, watching from start to finish. Yeah. Watched Dr. No, watched with Russia, um, was from it from Russia. Russia with Love? And then, uh, yeah, just got James Bonded out. Oh, I got hooked after I watched From Russia with Love. I got hooked and then... Yeah, the problem is when I'm trying to watch stuff with Emma, she's like, oh, we're not watching another James Bond. Oh, right. When uh, the sort of hype goes, like, you just don't, I just didn't get back to it. Yeah. Um, I, well, I'm watching them with Kate anyway, and because they're on Amazon Prime, they're all on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. We keep shouting. Oh, because they bought MGM, right? Yeah, so... But then I don't know what they're going to be doing with it, so I don't know how long they're actually going to be on there before they open up a new platform or something. Do you think they'll do that? I don't know. They'll keep them on, right? I was having this conversation. I think so. Yeah. Oh, so you can watch them whenever you want, but there's a lot to get through. How many are there? There's a lot. Not sure. You've not got it on your list? There's a... 
27 movies. Jesus, that's a lot of films. Huh? 12 actors. Here's a quiz for you. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this. 12 question. actors? How, can, yeah, can, well, some of them only did like one stint, right? Like one film. I can name. Name as many as you can. Bonus points if you do it in order. Yeah. Uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. Daniel Craig. Yeah. Uh, Roger Moore. Yeah. That's all, that's, all, that's all I can name. George Laz Lazenby. I'm not sure who that is. I don't know. I've never heard of this guy either. It says that he's... Oh, he's done it. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. So he must have come after Sean Connery, but only done one. Okay. There's a guy called David Niven. Are you sure there's 12? What does it say 12 here? 27 films. Hmm. No, they can't. I honestly count. just thought it was just them for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven. Well, the thing I looked at first was talking of including spoofs. So uh, okay, it must have included uh, Mike Myers. <laughs> that's a spoof of James Bond, right? Yeah, Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's Timothy Dalton. Um, the what? Well, there's David Nivian. So when I um, answered that question, I got Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig. But I guess these two have only done one Bond film, right? Oh, right. Guess. And the rest have done... That's probably why Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig, they stand out more because they've done more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig because that's like our era. Yeah. So, how long ago did you watch Doctor No? Uh, when I first moved down to London, so what was that two and a half years ago? All right, okay, not too long ago then. Did Did you know that in the first one, Sean Connery was thirty two or thirty three years old? All right. I thought he was. Mid- yeah, he looks a lot older in the movie. Mid forties, at least I thought. Yeah. Maybe his, was his, hair, his hairline's not that great, is it? Mm. It's more on his face, though, I thought. He seems to have aged a bit on his face. But, but then I'm 25 and I look about 36. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't look that old. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, should we get the first article on? Let's go for it. What have we got? Taking you so long. <laughs> I'm not as fast as Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is your article. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I saw this and I just thought we've been talking about Elon and uh, just sort of go along with a the theme. And I thought it's quite interesting how large the market cap is compared to some of the biggest brands in a uh, in the car market at the moment mm. so how many companies are there i think there's uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah. 14 car manufacturers but then you've got to think as well toyota volkswagen they make numerous cars right like, yeah within their field yeah exactly like uh volkswagen have uh, Seat, as we both know. Um, <laughs> Seat owners. <laughs> Audi. Uh, who else have we got? Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Um, is it Bentley? Yeah, Bentley. Yeah. Yeah, it's Bentley. Skoda. It's, Skoda, yeah. So, like, if you go out on, like, UK streets, UK roads, you're guaranteed, without a doubt, to see 
at least if you're just going on a five minute walk, you're going to see at least 20 um, Volkswagen cars. Yeah. So a car from the Volkswagen group. Yeah. Yeah. From the group. Yeah. And then the rest are probably BMWs and Mercs. So like if you compare that to Tesla, you have a market cap of over 1 trillion. And it's meant to have got a market cap of 101 it? billion. 101 billion. So it's a because tenth. It's, yeah, it's 10 times higher than. Uh, but Tesla's. Okay. Um, which is insane. Market um, cap's artificial, though, right? It's got. It's a bubble. That's about to. Well, could yeah. Be. So let's, this is why I brought the pictures to our attention. Just to say, like. Just even if you look at the gross revenue of all those companies compared to Tesla's, how Tesla is worth so much is sort of doesn't make any real sense. I understand. I can see where Tesla are going in the future, and I can see that they are they will be big players one day. They're already getting there, but to have a market cap of that much, it seems a bit extreme. Um, and I've always wanted to look at buying some Tesla shares, but I just can't justify it at the moment. I just think it is way too high. Um, and it's a purely on speculation that Tesla are going to be developing into this company, this futuristic company that are going to sort of going to take over the car industry. But for now, it's sort of a, just the price of it is sort of a no from me. Um, but there, there is there's potential there, massive potential. But I can't see it growing any any further. As far as I understand, you get burnt because nobody knows when the bubble burst. You're not the only one betting on if, but also on when. That's um, it. People talking about shorting Tesla. Uh, I think Bill Gates has got a short on Tesla. Um, Elon called him out about it. But I feel like there's a bit of a, like, it's definitely in a bit of a bubble at the moment. And as these guys are saying, you just don't know when or if it's going to pop. But when it does, it won't be a pretty sight. Tesla has a massive build in the future premium that other tech companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Facebook get or used to get. It basically amounts that these guys understand this future shit and everyone else is clueless. So throw money at them. Netflix was the future of TV until we reached a point where streaming is kind of here and not that interesting anymore. Which is, that's a very good point, I think. Mm. Um, you've seen everyone knows, well, we discussed it last week, right? The, did we discuss it last week? Yeah, Netflix are losing subscribers. Yeah. Um, their share price has been affected by that dramatically. Uh, so what I think will happen to Tesla is you're seeing... Um, these other companies building EV cars and focusing more on the future. They've seen the threat that Tesla has, but these companies have already got the capabilities to build cars on a mass scale. They've been doing it for years. Like for the, a lot of them have been around since the early part of last century. Yeah. So they've been doing that. They're, they're well, they, work, they know exactly what they're doing. Um, and it, all they have to do is incorporate this tech that Tesla has, and you'll start to see people's faith in Tesla start to decline a little bit as what's happening with Netflix when Disney came out. Netflix were new to the scene, disrupted the market. Disney came, who've been doing it for the best part of a hundred years as well. Mm. Um, Disney would have been dominating for a long time, and then they come, come out with Disney Plus, which just Went, went mental but my, i've got a good question then for you um so when netflix came out that was sort of the death of blockbuster and all these sort of 
rental companies and all the old fashioned um, types of ways of getting uh, entertainment. Yeah, yeah. And also, it probably did. Have, I don't know the figures, but it probably had quite an impact on cinemas and the, the price yeah. of cinemas obviously going up because of less people attending them. Do you think Tesla coming in as the Netflix of EVs will have an impact on car companies that are already out there? Will that are going to be, if not already, late to going into the EV market? I think the benefit Tesla have at the moment is the amount of data that they hold because they've been around since, well, they've been around for a long time, but they, I think they really started to blow up in around 2016 people. You actually see in Tesla's on the road. Yeah. Um, so say they've amounted that much data over the past six years mm -hmm. on the way people drive for, for their automated cars. Anyway, yeah, I think they're going to be ahead of the game in that sense. They, they're producing an algorithm that is going to be used to automate driving. And the best way to do it is by using data from real life driving situations where the other cars on collecting or the other car manufacturers aren't collecting this, this level of data that Tesla are. Yeah. When it comes to automation of cars, that's where I see the value in Tesla. Um, but these car companies that we just looked at are, are massive, like VW group, for example, VW groups, huge. So can I see Tesla overtaking them where they've built up brand loyalty for so many years? Um, I don't know. The thing is with Tesla, as much as they create cars, they're a, they are a software company. Uh, you can see with the way that Tesla's, the way that the car is, is but like you, you buy the car and you might not be happy with a certain upgrade you did, for example, the what not to 60. And I'm pretty sure on the app, you can just pay on the app to unlock your not to 60 to increase. Yeah. You can pay extra kind of to download the, the software yeah. to, yeah, to just to unlock that one thing. Well, it mental. I think it's only on the certain cars because some of them have, so you've got your front wheel drive or rear wheel drive cars, one of the two, but they've only got two motors. Whereas the four wheel drive cars got four motors. So if you've got the four wheel drive car anyway, without the performance pack, then you can download the performance pack and then unlock the extra performance out of the motors. Right, right, right. I believe that's how it works. Which is crazy. I mean, if that's just the, the first step of this software, then further down the line, you're just literally going to add, like you would download an app on your phone or on your computer. You're just going to yeah. download these apps. If they that's like... where I sort of think Tesla are leading the pack in terms of they think like a technology company, not like a car manufacturer. Yeah, they're a software company. Yeah. Literally. yeah. Mm. So they're going to be ahead of the game, I think, for some time. But it's only a matter of time till VW get somebody into uh, start implementing these technologies into their cars. Uh, whether they team up with another tech company. Yeah. Because Apple tried to get into the EV automated car market. They're, they're still, they're still, well, let me just close that for now, sorry. <laughs> they're still um, rumoured to be working on the EVs, right? I think they teamed up with a car manufacturer. All oh, right. <clears throat> Let's see. They're really um, stush about it. They don't release much information about what they've been doing, but it's, they're just coming straight out with a fully autonomous car, right? They're not just going to do an EV. Okay. That's what, what? I, I think is going on. What are your views on uh, autonomous cars? Autonomous cars? Yeah. Um, well, I do enjoy driving, so it would be a bit weird, but at the same time, I can't really see them coming out very 
anytime soon. I think the roads aren't ready. Yeah, like I think the whole infrastructure of our roads will need to change. Yeah. Um, maybe even nobody, like no human can drive a car whilst there's autonomous cars on the road. Yeah. Well, I reckon there'll be a transition period where only, for example, the motorways to begin with, you'll be able to go fully autonomous uh, like you can now. Yeah, you already can like, do that kind with of With the stuff. Teslas, yeah. And then they'll add a few more roads on big roads and then a few more on until they get to i guess they'll do like pilot schemes in certain cities i'm not sure if they're already sort of doing that or not maybe in california maybe because i did see a video of a tesla driving on normal roads and it took it uh cut a corner a little bit and hit one of the bollards on the side of the road <laughs> But one thing, a bit of a philosophical question is, who does the car protect? Does it protect the driver or does it protect the pedestrian? So if you're in a situation where a pedestrian runs out and the car's got no other choice but to go straight into a tree and injure the driver or potentially kill the driver, or the other option is it runs over the person, what decision does the car make? So as a human driving and you're in the same situation, your natural reflex is you'd go into the tree to go into the tree. Yeah. yeah, because you're stopping that immediate danger where the tree is like a second hand danger, right? Yeah, like because you're not really focusing on the tree whilst you're driving. You are focusing on what's going on in front of you. Yeah. So if someone like runs out, you're just going to swerve. And you're going to go into a tree and you won't even notice the trees there. Yeah. You're just where that instinct Because that's a second thought, right? That tree. Yeah. Um, but an auto autonomous car will know there's a tree there. But I'm then, because uh, it's a car and it thinks like a machine, like a computer, surely it won't just be two different options. Surely there'll be more options. But what about just a stop? Yeah, but you can't stop instantly. Why? Wow, I've seen some bus, some bus in Japan or something that just instantly stops. It stops instantly. Yeah, it probably kills half the passengers though. But <laughs> <laughs> so that if that's an option, then that, uh, the car will obviously choose that option. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think a car, if you're traveling like forty miles per hour, there'll be some sort of mechanism, right, which will just like not you're not going to use it all the time that emergency feature will only come in in an emergency yeah it like just stops the, but then it'll still be a bit scared hmm that's true well what's your answer to that question i don't know it's a uh, it's just going to be how it's programmed so the selfless answer would be to uh go into the tree <laughs> But then how do you get that? F There's no way it'll pass a health and safety yeah. regulation or whatever. If the car can injure its driver and passenger. Or if it's that, if it's able to. Then I guess it depends because if you've got uh, children in the back and it's a middle-aged man crossing the road. Right. <laughs> so it's got to determine that could it could work who's got more to lose <laughs> but then how can you say like it's just it's a difficult question isn't it yeah you like, can't think if, if it was a choice any human and it said if you had a choice to uh one person loses their life and it's a, a young boy or a middle-aged man you're more most people i think yeah, most people would choose the middle-aged man because the young boy's still got the rest of his life ahead of him. And Yeah, but ethically, that's just not right. I don't think there's... A... Well, obviously, it's a philosophy question. There is no right answer to it, but... But I guess if the infrastructure 
a road's changed where you could only cross at pedestrian crossings, then the person that runs out on the road is kind of their fault. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't run on a train track. Yeah. But if the train hit you, then it's not the driver's fault, it's, it's your fault. Yeah, and the train's basically autonomous in the sense that it only goes one route. Yeah. Because there's one track. And it can't stop in time. Maybe the car could do the same thing because if you walk out, yeah, you're at fault. You shouldn't have walked into the road when the car's there. Or if they are going to, this will take years, but if they are going to develop all the roads, have that little safe zone next to it where there's no trees. But that's just not going to work because you can't do that to every single. But then maybe go with flying cars then. (laughs) Elon said as well that flying cars won't happen. Yeah, I don't think it'll happen. What did he say? Something about something hitting him on his head. Like if... Remember like old, like old school movies, <laughs> sci-fi movies, they always had flying cars for the future. Future armor. <laughs> Back to the future. <laughs> I swear, Back to the Future, I don't know which one it was. Um... Number two was set in 2015. It was in 2015, weren't it? And it's yeah. just nothing like what they thought it was going to be. They had them hoverboards, but they weren't really hoverboards, were they? <laughs> they are just... <laughs> Some bars with two wheels on. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and then we are like, well, I guess we're somewhat different to when that came out. But then if you look at it as in Cyberpunk 2077, for example, that's probably more realistic of where we're going to be in the next like, 50 years. Yeah. I'll be downplaying well, it. I went on his website, 20... I think it's 2050.earth and it's like predictions of where earth will be in uh 2050 a glimpse into the future. It's quite it's quite interesting this one yeah that's it yeah just so you can like it's a bit difficult to use but if you click on, uh, so click on Silicon Valley, I think you might be able to see like, or if you could go on New York, I know 100% you can see. Oh shit, my bad. What New York looks like. What What do I go, where do I go in New York? Uh, just click on demo. At the top. Yeah. It's a bit glitchy. Yeah, it's just, it's not very nice to you. I was going to, uh bring it up as one of the article like my articles today but i just went on it i was like it's a bit it's not it doesn't work very well this is demo mode it's not working yeah but in your spare time check that out it's a uh, it's quite interesting looks like the demo is so it, who's all oh, casper predictions at the, at the top and then i filtered to most popular so if you go to the right yeah popular oh you can just add your own prediction yeah it's just like a community of people just adding in uh predictions of the future drone loudspeakers for concerts 2040 that could probably come sooner right they're doing drones for to keep people inside in china <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's quite a loudspeaker biometric payments that's already here though as we'll discuss later. A real 3D this one be cool. Which one? The cinema. Real 3D cinema. No, I don't think you'll need any glasses and it's just there. Oh yeah. Because it'd be hologram, wouldn't it? Yeah, like holograms. Three damage. Crazy. It would probably just be one of them novelties. You know that 3D was a novelty. Yeah, massive novelty. Yeah. And it got a bit boring. You could buy 3D DVDs to watch at home. Yeah. We had that 3D TV. Yeah. We used it once. With all the glasses as well. <laughs> right at the beginning when it was all expensive as well. Oh yeah, this one was cool. Cities inhabited solely by robots will emerge. Where's that? Yeah, people free. They'll be constructed as 
a prototype of the idea of colonization of other planets. Oh, yeah. People send autonomous road robots to carry out missions for humanity. Robots will build towns, develop the infrastructure, everything that is necessary for mining on other planets. Oh, agree. I don't agree. I could yeah, spend I think, ages on this website. Yeah, there's so much on there. I just I had a quick look on it before. I read this. This one was cool. Hmm. That's well interesting, this. Yeah. Carbon, Carbon credit. Ah, oh, that's... Vehicle power station will be obsolete. Electric cars will be powered by cloud computing. All 2030 right. is all. That's eight... Eight years away. It's been a race to stop climate change and global warming. One of the main goals is to achieve, to win the race, is to eliminate large amounts of CO2. And among the biggest producers of CO2 are fossil fuel cars. Many people see EVs as the alternative to the... It only gives you like a little... Uh, Fucking them. Nice well one. <laughs> as the alternative to traditional oil-powered cars. But the lack of power station infrastructure is one factor that decelerates the rise of EVs. So here's my concept to power it. All EV batteries are made with a specialized AI chip consisting of a transmatter, transmitter <laughs> and a receiver. The transmitter or induction code produces an electromagnetic field, which transfers the energy across the gap to the corresponding induction coil in the receiving device. Jeez, this is quite technical. It is way too scientific. Yeah, the receiver then converts the energy from the magnetic field to usable electric current, which is then used to charge a battery. Hmm. So it can be done, this. Cloud computing can charge. That means everything will always have power. Yeah, sounds like unlimited power if uh, this can actually be done. What are people's comments on this? One guy. We need charging locations that are centrally located. It's extremely hard to find locations for ultra fast charging. Oh, he's not really commented on on the guy's theory. We have found a way to generate your own electricity and not be a burden on the grid. Oh. oh. He has commented on it at the end. Hmm. That would be Imagine. interesting if uh, that can actually come into play. I'll... Uh... Turn this off because we could spend a full episode just going through this, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's well interesting, this website. It's got... Uh, oh, God, just before we move on, I just saw this one as I ended it. People will know the exact year and cause of their death. Now that is a fucking black mirror episode. I feel like that could uh, actually happen. You feel like it could? Yeah. How? Like if you see how far, like we wear, most people are wearing these on the wrists, and I know now it's very basic. It tells you how many calories you've burned, how many steps you've done, how your sleep was. Mm. I think the new ones tell you how stressed you are. But all these like factors, if you've had that on you since you were born, yeah, or something implemented in your arm since you were born, and it reads all your biometric data, then it can easily predict what um conditions what diseases you like the probability of getting these diseases are in your lifetime and as you get older and start becoming more unhealthy drinking yeah. smoking well plus you won't even have it on your wrist you'll have it in implement yeah, just be an implant to you and it'll just so. read your your whole body all your life and then just keep feeding your data and then tell you how to <laughs> be an app that'll tell you how to uh Try and mitigate things. Yeah, so it'll be like at the moment everyone goes on their Fitbit or whatever smartwatch and they see how many steps they've got. Instead of that, they'll see as long as you have it in, in you and you're monitoring it, you'll see you will, you've will you got 20 more years left. But then, you know, everyone's measuring how many steps they've done and competing. They're like, well, I've got fucking 21 years left and this yeah. guy's only got 18. <laughs> And then you have to go for a walk and it will just go up a couple of days when you, you can add 
Add your friends on the app like you do on Fitbit. In a competition, he's going to live longest. <laughs> but this kind of brings us on to the uh, article that I chose, so it's probably a good yeah. uh, way to lead into that. And we can talk a bit more about uh, chips being inserted into your body. Yeah. So, yeah, as we read on the previous one, the microchips... Uh, microchip implants that will let you pay with your hand. Um, this has already come into play. I believe some banks are offering, are offering it. Um, I'm not sure. You have to pay a certain price and you can already get it. Um, this Patrick Pullman <laughs> has uh, he's been using it because he keeps forgetting his wallet at home. So. <laughs> All in all he needs now is his hand. Um, but the main reason I've chose this article is because I wanted to sort of just talk to you a little bit more about what our thoughts are on it and what your thoughts are on it. What I'm um, someone paying with their hand. Yeah, would you would you get this would you get a microchip in your arm or your hand? Not to pay for some I mean I'm quite, well, obviously I'm quite young, but I'm quite old school in the way that I don't even use my smartwatch or my phone to pay for stuff. I still use a, a debit card to pay for my items. Yeah. So to pay for something, I probably wouldn't put one in my body. Um, maybe when you can do more stuff. I don't like know. check your health status and things like that. Yeah, or... For example, where was I? I was going into an office somewhere uh, in London, and I needed. Uh, we all needed ID to get our name badges. Okay, yeah. And if you, for example, have your passport, your driving license, all implemented into this chip, so instead of having to, do, and on top of it, it does the payments, it will alleviate needing any sort of identification or wallet or to get into a nightclub or anything at all, then that will be quite convenient because then you won't need a wallet at all. See, I, I like the idea of it, the convenience of it, but then it sort of brings me on to sort of like a ethical issue of like, now I'm not thinking about it, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say it, but then I'm gonna sort of contradict what I'm gonna say. Um, is how much control the people who are running this. So you say you've got one chip and it's got your driving license, your passport, your medical records, your your bank account, everything on there. How much control is the person who or the people who are developing this chip gonna have over society? Hmm. Because they're going to have access to all the data on everybody. Well, we have that now, right? With the yeah. amount of information that's on my smartphone for Google. This is what I was going to say. I was sort of to myself because we've got smartphones mm. and we're in a society now where you pretty much can't live without a smartphone. If you do, you're sort of, you're, you're, you're sort of uh, in a group of uh, odd people. You're off the grid, basically. Yeah, off the grid. Um but I think from a convenience side of it, it's good. And smartphones have made us all way more, made everything in life more convenient. Mm. But then it sort of raises the question, do we really need it? And I know we need a smartphone now, but did we really need the smartphone? Apple made sure we needed it. Yeah. Like, but it's sort of, it's like, it's very uh, philosophical episode, mm. this is. Because <laughs> it raises out quite a few questions. Like, did, where does it stop? Well, I guess what the first thing that came into my head when you brought this article up about having the payment feature in there was obviously I couldn't really be asked putting something in my body if it's just to pay for things. Because obviously, if I wanted to, I could put it on my phone and pay for stuff on my phone, which I always have with me. But I guess this is one side of 
implants, which is for convenience to do shit faster, basically, which everyone wants convenience and save some time and so on and so forth. And then you've got what Elon's doing with the Neuralink on the other hand, where he's using it, an implant to track health and how the body's functioning and any monitoring illnesses and diseases, etc. It just, there's two things there that are sooner or later going to interconnect and the discussion that we just had earlier is everything will just be on this chip. Your ID, everything, your health, your life expectancy. And then before you know it, you're just going to, literally that is putting a computer in your body. But that technology will advance, will get yeah. a lot more advanced. And I don't know, then you'll be able to just Google shit with your brain or something. I guess like it gets to a point where we're no longer human. Yeah, we have uh, integrated cyborg. with a cyborg. Well, we've turned into a cyborg, yeah. Yeah. But that's what um, you don't want to live side by side with the robots. You want to integrate with the robot. And from what I like, I thought about all this like stuff in the past and like growing up in the nineties, early two thousands, it's all like you, we've experienced what life was like with, uh, just te- technology was more for entertainment purposes, but then yeah. you know, technology's, uh, become more of a necessity in life. Like you yeah. can't live about it. So I think growing up and experiencing that, for me anyway, it's quite thinking about where the future's going is quite is quite worrying because it's gonna change so quick, so fast. Like everything's already changing so fast. Mm. And it's gonna keep going like ten times faster. Yeah. But what I'm starting to think now is sort of just, you just got to embrace it. Live with it and just take yeah. it on. Yeah. Take it on. And, like technology, new technologies, like, they excite me, but they also make me nervous as well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's scary. New technology is scary. I mean, look at um, Meta with the VR headsets. That shit's going to get so advanced that you're going to literally have that thing gone for a large part of your week or a large part of your day yeah so and at the moment we're probably i mean if you went back like well 90s to early 2000s when you didn't even really you had a phone just to make a phone call you went on the com or a text you went on the computer for a purpose you went on the internet for a purpose now you sort of go on the internet without a purpose but you it's just a bit of escapism for you yeah so like people probably would have would have gone on the internet like twice, three times a week for it, and have a purpose to do it. But they would yeah. probably look at the way we're living now, or if someone like was having this conversation that we're having back then, and said, "Oh, you're going to be on your phone for well, I don't know, like the best part of the day. Uh, you say you sleep six to eight hours, and then." Probably for the rest of most of that day, you're you're connected to the internet. You're doing stuff on the internet. They probably wouldn't. Well, it probably makes sense, but they wouldn't agree with it. They'll be scared of that. And then yeah, if we're yeah. going to tell you now, you're probably going to be in VR for the same amount of time you're on the internet at the moment in the night, thirty years or even twenty years, then you'll probably say, "Well, that's crazy," because I'll just stop myself. I'll just stop myself. I just won't let that won't happen to me, or that won't. Yeah. Well, it fucking it will happen, and you've got no choice. But one of my articles is um, yeah, I'll bring it up now because um, it fits perfectly. Right. I feel like all the the tangents are going on this. <laughs> I think all of our articles are quite centered around. Well, I don't know actually because it's all about different stuff. Yeah, so this brings me to this, right? The article is, there's no escape in the metaverse. Meta is reportedly releasing four new VR headsets by 2024. So I've only read this headline and in my head, in my head, I just thought Meta, well, Facebook now known as Meta are creating these devices, which 
grant you access into the metaverse to be fully immersed into the metaverse and um, we also found we also know that to enter metas or facebook's platform uh, horizon world you need to access that through a meta uh, vr headset so we've done re releasing four new vr headsets within well within the next two years they are gonna have full control i don't know about this sam well, i know sandbox and i know decentraland are quite big but meta are going to be bigger i think and they're going to properly push us into this new world and they're going to have full control of us in that world it's going to be there he's knows what he's doing mr well, Zuckerberg. we went on decentraland um on sunday yeah we've not been in horizon worlds that's what metas is called right We've not been in there, but just from looking at images of Horizon Worlds compared to Decentraland, Decentraland seems like a bit of a unorganized sort of mess. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's what you would expect. I think you said it looks like, um, it'll be like Times Square. Yeah, it's just like advertisement boards everywhere. Um, yeah. People like sort of wandering around, not really knowing what to do in there uh the casino was quite busy though <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but just looking at horizon worlds it seems like it's got a little bit more to it like it's a bit more ahead of the game like uh decentraland seems very still like in its beta phase yeah, whereas Horizon Worlds, it looks like you can go in there for a purpose. Say, if we didn't want to have this call, you wouldn't have it in VR. We would go into Horizon Worlds for that. Yeah. And, and it, looks, that yeah. it looks like it's set up and ready like, for a professional environment. Or if people want to actually enjoy it and have fun, they could go in there. Um, whereas the central land just seems a little bit, a little bit messy at the moment. Yeah, like uh, I feel like the people who've created Decentraland have just, I've not been in Sandbox, but in Decentraland, I feel like they've just made a platform knowing they're going to use it for something, but at this moment, they don't know what else to use it for apart from advertisement purposes. Yeah. Um, whereas Horizon Worlds actually looks like somewhere quite fun. Yeah, looks fun and it looks like somewhere where it could be used for like professionally as well. Yeah. Mm. It just looks more polished. And there, even from this banner, um, I've not personally been in Horizon Worlds, but you can see the uh, interactions that everyone's having there. Whereas yeah. in Decentraland, you don't really interact. I think one guy asked me how I can make some money on here oh, yeah. and <laughs> left. <laughs> But yeah, you've got the creative tool, so you can, you can build your own space. Which I think that's what Decentraland has at the moment, is the creation think, side of things. I think with Decentraland, you have to purchase the premises, though, don't you? Yeah, you have to. And they're quite expensive. I'm not sure if Meta will just sort of give you that. Well, Probably be on some sort of subscription long. model, right? So premium users can make their own spaces or I'm not sure if it'd be like similar to Facebook where they just use advertisements. Hmm. Just pure ad revenue. Yeah. It... But I think uh, Meta are all sort of doubling down on the uh, metaverse. Yeah. I think they'll, um, they'll have the largest market share of the metaverse. Yeah. Um, by far, I, I reckon, eventually. They're pushing it's, it. It's like an extension of social media. It's the social media on Web 3.0. Yeah. An immersive, well, Web 3.0 is, is a broad term, Web 3.0. But yeah. uh, it's like Metaverse is just an immersive social media platform. And you know Meta are making the right moves because... They wouldn't have like changed their name to Meta unless yeah. they were going to make big moves in this space. Um, 
Yeah, so it says here on this article, just for a little bit more info, on the article about escaping the met there's no escape in the metaverse with the push basically that meta are having. That the with the four headsets, two of them are going to be on work and pro productivity. So that's Project Cambria and Funston. Okay. Uh, while the other two versions of are going to be uh, of the quests are going to be for gaming, so oh, okay. yeah, it, it's going to be professional and it's going to be fun, and they're going to bring them two in together to make it. Well, what do you do at the moment? You either in your life, you either work or you're in your leisure time. Yeah, sort of just replicating that in. So if they bring them both together, then you'll never have to leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no escaping. Uh, exactly. Uh, the Cambria will probably have a high resolution screen. I can imagine that being quite expensive than the uh, Project Cambria one. So yeah. I think someone was asking me if I will get a Quest headset because I don't actually have one. Um, and I said, no, I'm going to wait for the next gen ones because I feel like the next gen ones are going to be the real push. Where at the moment, then they're, they're going to be outdated quite fast, the current ones. And I think this is, it's news to me this one. I think this is what I'm going to be waiting for. I, I don't know. I'll see what they all offer. I probably won't get the most expensive one, but what about yourself? Do you, do you reckon you'll go for it? Um, so in the previous episodes, I've been a bit hesitant about the metaverse, but upon reflection, I've started to think to sort of embrace the change. Yeah. And sort of be an early adopter of it instead of being worried about it and then not adopting it early. Um, so is it is the Quest 3 that's coming out, isn't it, this year? The Quest 3? I don't know. I thought they were just coming out with these four. I didn't know the Quest 3 was a thing. Yeah, I think the Quest... I'm sure you told me about it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Quest 3. But uh, I feel like this is going to be outdated if these other ones come out. Unless one of them projects is the Quest 3. Yeah, here. I think it's dubbed Project Cambria. There's a new headset IP designed to introduce users to groundbreaking VR technology that will help establish the earlier, earliest days of Meta's aptly named but potentially overambitious Metaverse project. It's not over ambitious. I think they'll hit the nail on the head with it. Hmm. Meta has clarified that development is still underway in the next generation of more budget friendly VR headsets. I don't think 299, even if that is the mid price one, is that expensive for one of these. But I guess they're going to go low and get every single person they can because they're going to spend money in Meta or if it's ad revenue, yeah, they're going, to, they're going to make money with the Metaverse. And people probably have to purchase things inside the Metaverse, so they'll make money from that also. Yeah. Um... We'll also likely see the Quest 3 drop under the Meta brand instead of Oculus. Yeah, I think it's called the Meta Quest 3. Yeah, they're called the Meta Quest now, aren't they? The, even the two is the Meta Quest Two now, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Since from when it changed its name in was it November? Yeah, I think it branded as the Meta Quest six days ago. So Oculus Free Quest for us release this year. The Quest Free will cost cost the same as the Quest Two, or might be cheaper. Two nine nine or three nine nine for the for the bigger version. Yeah. I well, like you say, I'm definitely going to uh, embrace it because I think I might just get a Quest Three. Mm. When's it out? Um, I'll have a look now. Sorry, there's no release date for it yet. It says Q2 2022. All right. We're in Q2 now. I know. Hmm. When's Meta's Connect event? Let's have a look. Meta's Connect. 
I'm sure I read somewhere it's coming out in June or July. But that's when it's expected to come out. It just says, well, but um, Q2, yeah, runs between April and June. So the release date will be any time between then. Yeah, maybe I'll go for it. I'm sure if it becomes sort of a professional tool, companies will just buy people those headsets instead of giving them laptops. Yeah. Oh, it'll just you'll give them a laptop and a headset. Join your meetings on it. Well, I said you can code and uh, send emails in there. I guess you don't really need to do anything else. We well, even obviously I'm a freelancer, so I work with different clients. One of my clients, or oh, must have been about a year ago, we had an idea. Was doing Zoom call after Zoom call because we're working on a hefty project, and we just felt in the end of it, we just felt more disconnected than we did connected, just because it's just logging onto Zoom, seeing the same background of us both. We just started to feel more disconnected than connected even though we was talking more than we had ever and then we had the idea if we had these whiteboard meetings in the metaverse or it wasn't even metaverse and just in vr then um or metaverse yeah. is a publicly known name and it would be imagine if you got a quest 3 i think your client would look at getting one as well yeah i reckon so i'm actually using it um, yeah, for whiteboard meetings. Because we've even recently discussed doing this in the metaverse, which I think is something that we should uh, start looking into a lot more. Yeah, stay tuned. Because <laughs> I think it will be uh, probably want to be one of the first people doing a podcast in the metaverse. Mm. And people can just come and join join us in the room. I'm not sure how it all works properly yet. We need to sort of figure it all out, but... I reckon we would need to do that on Horizon Worlds, though, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So we'll need to get... We'll need to invest in a quest anyway. Yeah. For uh, business purposes only. Yeah. <laughs> and gaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll pull up the next one. Yeah. This is, I just wanted your thoughts on this. I know it was inevitable, but what well, Elon Musk has a new CEO for Twitter lined up. Um, Agrawal is estimated to receive 42 million if he's going to be terminated um, 12 months of a change, so change of control. So with Elon coming in, that's if he's to fire him as soon as he gets the full takeover, then that's going to be within 12 months. Um, he'll get 42 million. My f initial reaction to this was Elon no longer gives a fuck about money because 42 million is still a lot of money, but I'm even reading it thinking, oh, you'll pay 42 for that. But that, that's a shitload of money. And why am I brushing it off? Is like, yeah, he'll pay 40, 42 mil just for a CEO change. Yeah, but it's like, dropping apart compared to what he paid for Twitter. That's what I mean. That's how crazy it is that he's just got so much money. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you think about it? I think it's a good idea. I think, um, apart from the money part of it, which kind of took me by storm, changing the CEO, he's making big changes in there with free speech. So I think out with the old in with the new right yeah i think he wants to make some big changes on twitter so he's gonna have to restructure the um the leadership at twitter and obviously start with the chief exec and work your way down i guess um it's clear that he's got a certain idea direction he wants to take twitter in and the current direction is going down is not does not follow the path he wants to take it. Um, mm. Elon's a clever guy. He knows he's not just bought Twitter to keep Twitter how it is. Yeah. If Twitter stayed how it was, 
Um, I don't think it would reach its full potential. So I feel like sort of him getting rid of the CEO and bringing in his own guy is kind of expected. Uh, yeah. And 42 mil, it's a lot of money like to me and you, but to Elon, it's... Pocket change. Yeah. And for the value, if he's if he sees value in Twitter, which obviously he does see value in Twitter. Yeah. At 42 million, you're just going to think, all right, I'm going to spend 42 million now. I've already spent 44 billion. Um, I'm going to spend an extra 42 billion to get rid of the CEO, but I'm going to change Twitter and it's going to be in five, 10 years time, it's going to be worth this much. Yeah. Like, Can you see from, sorry, carry on to finish here. No, go on. From what we were saying before about Meta being the new Facebook for the Metaverse, can you see Elon? Because he needs to have a play in the Metaverse, right? Um, he's got to have one. Do you think he's using Twitter as his play into the Metaverse? Hmm. Potentially. He might do the exact... He might have... He might have... What uh, Mark Zuckerberg did with Facebook might have shocked... Um, turning Facebook into Meta for the Metaverse might have shocked Elon into thinking he needs to... He's going to be behind because of racing, right? To yeah. always be at the top. He might have felt like he's going to be a bit behind. So he needs to um, do something drastic. Um, it's hard with Elon because you never know what his actual vision is for something. He makes so many jokes for his marketing purposes. Yeah. Um, you don't actually know. a bit of a persona in the public. Yeah. Um, but obviously he's not, he's, he's a clever guy. So he knows exactly what he's doing. And I think potentially he could look at moving Twitter into the metaverse. Mm. Which I, I never really thought of that, but it does make sense. He's a future thinker and he obviously sees some kind of value there and moving into sort of the web point three, um, web 3.0 realm is makes a lot of sense mm. and he might have had a chat with his current CEO and the current CEO doesn't believe in it or wants to continue how things are. But in this fast changing world, you can't really continue. Like it, it works now, but is it going to work in five years time? Is it going to work in 10 years time? Yeah. Probably not. Things are going to change massively from, from then, from now to then. And that's what's going to start happening with C well, that's what is happening with CEOs now. Anyway, they're coming into businesses and as technology in the world advancing at such a fast rate, what a CEOs come into a big corporate corporation to do that job is going to take them less amount of time each time as everything else progresses. So like what, um, Bezos did with Amazon and AWS, just when it gets to a certain, when you hit the roof, of a corporation, a certain CEO, it's time for them to move on to their next project yeah. and get someone else to take them that step further. And that's yeah, obviously need, what's going on with Twitter. You sort of need that fresh thinking to come in, yeah. fresh leader to direct the company and take it to its next level. Uh, once CEO sort of done his job, built up to a certain point, maintained it, and then it's ready for the transition period for the next sort of generation of leaders to come in. Yeah. Start moving things forward. So, I guess, this guy, the current, this is the first time I've seen the current CEO of Twitter. All right. He's like quite a young, young chap. Should we see how old he is? So, you'd expect him to like have a bit more of a future kind of focus. 37 years old. Yeah, he's not, he's not that old to be a CEO. That is young, yeah. If, uh, Jack Dorsey, the owner's 45. Sat Satya Nadella is 40, uh, 54. I thought he was younger yeah. than that. I mean, there's definitely a bigger play with Twitter than free speech. Yeah, 100%. I think free speech is sort of the change here and now, but then there's, he's got other plans for it, definitely. Yeah, and I think he's it's good that he's doing free speech, and I get why he agrees with it. But I can't help but think he's using that as a marketing tool to just promote a big change with Twitter. 
it gets so much attention on him buying Twitter. It's ridiculous yeah. the amount of attention it's got. I think what he's noticed is, um, so I feel like advocates of censorship are a small minority in the general population, but that a small minority with the loudest mouths. Mm. So on Twitter, it may feel like everybody's against Elon and this free speech, but if you go around and you talk to general people, they're going to agree with free speech and want free speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. just don't shout about it on social media. Yeah. So I think he no- he understands that and he knows if he starts talking about free speech and buying Twitter and sort of advocating free speech through Twitter, he's going to get a lot of people on his side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Because you can see some of the biggest, the biggest podcast in the world, uh, Joe Rogan. He's a massive advocate of free speech and he's the biggest podcast in the world. So there are people out there who agree with those. The the majority of people agree with those views just from looking at the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they wouldn't follow him otherwise. Yeah, they wouldn't follow him. Mm. Um, Russell Brand, how much he's grown. Yeah. Like... And ben Shapiro, he, he's yeah, final, yeah. All these influencers or podcasters, I don't know what you want to call them. They are technically influencers, aren't they? They do influence the masses. Yeah. Um, they do. The ones that are growing seem to be the ones that are advocating for free speech and democracy. So I think Elon's noticed that, noticed the trend and jumped on. Yeah, there's a bit of a power shift coming for people's voices because it's been well free speech it's been a leftist um who sort of had the bigger voice for a long time and only recent well i'll say only in recent years it's pro- well i don't know if that's just for me or in general but it's coming to light now that uh, the, the right wing got right. more of a saying i used to think oh, it's just me me and you and then some of the people we talk to but then when you actually look at the numbers and if you think about Joe Rogan being the biggest podcast in the world, <laughs> he's uh, it makes sense that there's more people, a lot more people out there who believe yeah. and have the same sort of views as, as us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's, it's all hidden behind the people that talk the loudest on social media and corporatism. Yeah, well, like, corporatism is a massive one. Yeah, and I think... I think that's the biggest, like, sort of corporations are the biggest ones that sort of skew our view on what society want. Well, like Twitter, like, is a massive example. Is the example for it? Like, they 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 shut down Alex Jones. They shut down Donald Trump. Yeah. Ex president, they banned him off Twitter. <laughs> and you think, like, because they're doing this, society in general is doesn't want it. But mm. if you actually look at the numbers of like, like I said, Joe Rogan, like society doesn't want censorship. It wants free speech. It wants to be able to listen to alternative views. It wants everything. Plug. plug. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it is true though. Um, yeah. It's a, a good move. I think anything that I'm a fan of Elon. So I think anything that he does is going to be it's going to be good it's going to be exciting he's not just going to buy twitter okay everyone can do free speech now there is definitely more to come so this part of the podcast is here to stay yeah because it's going to be i think it's going to be a segment on every podcast uh, yeah twitter and elon <laughs> shall i whack do up feel like i read a lot of uh, articles and about elon <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like whenever I start just doing some article searching for the show or just in general, there's always Elon on yeah. every website, without without a doubt. It seems to be everywhere at the minute. Um, all right, let's see which articles we've got. We've had a bit of a tech tech heavy episode. Uh, I'll go away from tech completely then. Uh, Oh, oh shit. Oh. Oh, 
Doesn't matter. Yeah. So I don't think we spoke about uh Russia and Ukraine, yeah. No, we haven't. So I uh yeah, I came across this today that apparently Putin is gonna undergo some uh cancer surgery. So it was speculated before like when the war kicked off that Putin wasn't very well. And it was a sort of a uh, just one second. Cam, can you hear? That noise, scraping sound. No. No. Oh, my neighbours next door, I think they're scraping the wall. Oh, right. Yeah, so it was speculated when he actually first attacked Ukraine that he wasn't very well. And it was a bit of a... Some people are saying that he's going to die and um, he's sort of doing it as a last outing. Mm. Um but <laughs> I feel like it's quite uh if he actually does have cancer and he's having to go through surgery, it's quite a scary thought, like if he is on his deathbed. Nothing to lose. Yeah, what's he got to lose? Like where how far could this actually escalate? Um But yeah, the, I just thought I'd bring this in, like, because he's not really spoke about it. Yeah, so no, um, it's a good update. Um it feels like it could be one of two things to me. It could be either instant karma, so he's just fucking killed shitloads of people, innocent people. So then it's just instant karma, if you believe in that, since we're going down some tech and some philosophy. Um, or, yeah, like you've just said, it. He, I can imagine he's <laughs> planned to obviously take over Ukraine for a, for a long time, and he's been planning some quite radical stuff but it could be a sense of oh the doctors just diagnosed him with whatever and then he goes back home right right we're well, fucking going because i need to start this b- movement before i uh pass away so it could have just yeah. triggered him to do it like you've said i think it's i think it triggered him to do it because when you look at some of the um initial meetings he had he was sat so far away from the person he was having a meeting with on a long table. Yeah, that really long table. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, and people are saying that he's scared of COVID. So if he's got cancer or some underlying health conditions, then... And you know COVID affects people with underlying health conditions more than it does your healthy person. Yeah. It makes sense that he's trying to avoid catching COVID. Yeah, because it keeps the people away from him. He's at risk there, really. Yeah. So yeah, he sat with Macron, and uh, was that a fucking? That's more than two meters, that. Yeah, and the sound some, like, when it was first speculated, people were saying that this, he's scared of COVID, so he's trying to keep um, the people he's meeting that like, far away from him as possible. Yeah. So he can catch it. Um, it's either that or it's a bit of a power play, like. I'm going to sit you all the way over there. That's what I initially thought. Yeah. yeah. So it could be, it's all like, it's all speculation. You're just looking at images, aren't we? Like trying to decide yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on in his head. But, well, there's this video here. This is like him fidgeting, right? Yeah. Because I think he's saying he's got Parkinson's. I don't know. Just how he sat anyway is a bit he's like sat. he's all known for dear life. He's only sat at the table. He doesn't look very. Healthy, does he? I don't know. I've always thought he's. I don't know if this is just a fucking the article trying to. I don't know why he's got his hand on the table like that? It's strange. He's a strange guy, though. Russian president. It's only rumored, though, isn't it? No one knows. Yeah, it's rumored. Yeah, but he's sort of hitting the headlines. I think today and yesterday. I don't know if this uh, New York Post is very... Uh, Reliable. Yeah, I don't think it's a reputable source. I think it's like a like a tabloid, you know, like um, the sun is here. I think yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Some kind of thing. I don't know for sure, but any American viewers let us know in the comments. Yeah. 
But they've kind of got this flow where they talk about him being a bit ill and surgery and fidgeting and shit, and then it goes on to show all the shit he's done. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not funny, so, but... Why are you laughing? Just the, the way they've formatted the... All right. Like, oh, do you feel sorry for him? And then it's like, well, this is what he's done. Yeah, I can hear that scraping. In fact, I don't really keep up to date with much on what's going on over there. I don't try to stay away for a bit from uh, negative negative news. Um, but when it first happened, I was uh, pretty like glued to it. Yeah, I think most yeah. people were, and then it sort of died. The same when, when COVID first came across, everyone was glued to COVID. And then you sort of just get a cut. It's weird. You sort of just get accustomed to it. Yeah, there's a lot of that with news. I mean, well, well, not news, just things that happen. You just sort of something happens. Everyone's like, "This is crazy. This is crazy," and then something else will happen, and then that last thing is just completely forgotten about. Like Brexit happened, everyone was like, "Oh, this is crazy," or this. They, oh, everyone had their opinions, and then COVID happened, and it was like, "Well, Brexit just fucking no." Yeah, me. Brexit gets forgotten about, and then and then this has now overtaken COVID. I feel like at the moment it's just like one thing after another after another. Yeah. Like the media just latch on to one story and then that's all you hear. I did read somewhere. I can't remember exactly what it's saying, but it was just talking about how there always has to be something or else if, if there's nothing, then just the, the world wouldn't work properly. And it's happened generations, generations, like even before all the information was easy accessible there was always something going on or yeah. some rumor going around i guess since like brexit that's when we were like proper adults so yeah well we properly started looking into stuff yeah that's what we uh that's what we remember. and then information was so became like 24 7 around the same time we turned into adults yeah 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 um right, i've got two more articles one of them sort of links with covid i just put it in because it's a bit it's a bit of a mad mad thing i found it quite interesting and then i've got one nice light one to end it on after this yeah right. i think we'll spend too long on this alleged terror funder sent covid bounce back loans to isis so a guy applied for the bounce back loan 25k or whatever and um they used it to fund ISIS. A no. former pub landlord faces terror charges over allegations he collected thousands of pounds in COVID bounce back loans to send to ISIS. A pub landlord as well? Yeah. Tarek Nam, I can't pronounce his name. No, 42 no. years old, he faces eight charges of funding terrorism. That's weird. So. I just thought that was some good news to put in. Um, it's quite interesting. <laughs> to be fair, like, I've not heard about ISIS for ages. This guy's bringing it back to the news. Yeah. COVID and ISIS. It's like a double whammy. <laughs> Nostalgia. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. When I, when I was reading the article, I just thought... Like, I wasn't surprised by it anyway. I was just like, oh, that's interesting. And then I've, after reflecting a bit, I thought, it's not surprising information. And then they got me thinking, there's that much shit, like fucked up shit that actually goes on in the world. And we're so accustomed to the information that we're getting that stuff isn't as surprising as it should be. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. Because when you think about it, like, You, there's so many things that happen like this all the time that it's just it's just another one to add to the pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pile's this big. Like, yeah, your first time you hear about something like, oh, yeah, bloody hell, they've done that. That's, that's crazy. And then the next one happens, and you're like, oh, it's going happen again. <laughs> and then the next one's happened. And then you've got a pile this big. When the next one comes on, you just like, oh, just chuck it in the pile. Yeah. And with the rest where of it's like because of like Netflix and Netflix documentaries and YouTube and all this stuff, you sort of 
you just you can just learn about all the fucked up shit in yeah. probably a week you can learn about several different cases of just crap like isis for example conspiracy theories of but then there's more and more conspiracy theories that were quite entertaining to think about oh what if that happens more and more of them are coming true yeah so that was weird as well isn't it mm. it just adds like... to the pile of shit though doesn't it like, yeah. just... and i think this is why uh boris johnson's been in power like stay, managed to stay in power for all that party gate stuff mm. because it came out initially that they had christmas drinks was it yeah and then everyone's off like, oh, he's fucking live blah, blah blah they've been having parties and then that died down a little bit and then comes out again that they had more than one party and then everyone's uproar again and then that dies down a bit then the investigation goes ahead the police find out that he's been lying and they did have a party finds him but that wasn't really as shocking as the initial couple yeah. of uh, but i think that's what's kept him in is that people got used to it like all right he's done these parties like we found out about it yeah old news now like, it was a shock at first shock a little bit more of a sh- like less of a shock second time third time when he got fined like you normally give normally give the fuck yeah no one's really like clinging on to things and keeping hold of it they're just sort of just jumping on the bandwagon for a bit and then jumping on yeah, and then yeah. jumping off. I mean, there's BLM that happened. I know that's probably continued longer than other things, but I felt like everyone just sort of latched onto that idea for a bit and then just jumped off. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's that much happening. You can't just latch onto one thing. No. And we're not exposed to so much information that the story is just changing constantly. Like it was all about the party gate stuff, and then the Ukraine war happened, and then. Mm literally all got forgotten about yeah do you remember we watched that thing on netflix that reflected back on 2021 oh yeah that death to 2021 yeah that's like looking back on that the amount of shit that just came and went just gone forgotten about is ridiculous i mean we're gonna look we're gonna look back on 2022 and even we're only in may but there's been shit loads of stuff that's happened yeah probably stuff that's happened that's big that i don't even know about but what, what we're saying about um they're getting away people the people in power are getting away with stuff now and i think they know they are um so they they're in a really scary situation well we're in a scary situation that like these people have so much power against us but yet they're getting away with everything because no one's got attention span long enough to yeah deal with the problems that are going on and this is sort of what scares me the most about technology as well is that these people in power so i read a quote i think i can't quote it like exactly what it was but i'll tell you like the gist of it it was if the people in power know more about you than you know about them then you've lost freedom. Mm. I think I've heard that quote. So, and I feel like with technology, the people in power are getting more, know more and more about us. Yeah. We're knowing less and less about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what worries me the most about technology. And I think if technology was more decentralized and was more, the people had more control over what information and data was going out there then it'd be more exciting yeah but i think it's got a very dark side to it which is what worries me about where it's gonna where it's gonna take us is it gonna lead us down a path of uh like authoritarianism that quote you said the first company i thought or company power but i thought of was google mm-hmm. Because Google knows so much about us, and I actually don't know that much information at all about. I know a fair bit about Amazon or um, Microsoft or Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, somehow Google have 
managed to probably collect the most amount of data on people, but stay under the radar. But they own the engine where you find your information. Yeah. So it's obvious, obviously they're not going to let any information come out. Or well, they just like control what comes out. From, from criticism. They can control it though, right? They can control what comes up on our Google searches. And how else do you even get information now? Yeah. Do you think that's what it is then? Google controlling what we're being fed? And any criticism against Google doesn't get shown up? Because I never hear Google in the press like about... You, you look at Amazon and you think, all right, like they do some dodgy stuff. Employees and all that. Yeah. Apple, you do, they do dodgy stuff like, mm. with their employees as well. But you hear a lot about that. And with the data and all that side, you hear a lot of yeah. sort of data scandals. Or... With Google, you don't, you don't even really hear a whisper about them. Um, I think... Unless you actually think about it, Google are to somebody who doesn't research tech and understand about data, they probably think Google's a good company. Hmm. It's going on YouTube. <laughs> to be fair, you hear quite a bit of bad press about YouTube. I think what we should do is, um, I don't know if it's still in beta, the desktop version, but you can still use DuckDuckGo. And for our next set of articles, Maybe we shouldn't. We should trial DuckDuckGo and see where we get what we get. Yeah. Well, you use Brave browser now, don't you? Brave, but I still search through Google, though, don't I? Oh yeah. Oh, you mean DuckDuckGo search engine? The search engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go on yeah. Brave browser, Brave, or a, just a different. Don't go on Chrome. Yeah, I use uh, Firefox because that's all open source. Yeah, I've got Firefox as well. It's so lightweight as well. Firefox. Yeah, and it, yeah, it doesn't use any. Well, hardly any RAM compared to Chrome. Mm. Well, we're not really short on RAM, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I, I used, was using it on my old laptop, and I just carried it over onto this one. Mm. Oh, I was right. using a bit of Brave, and because my work, I can't do my work on Brave because it doesn't, for some reason, it's not compatible. Oh, right. Oh, right, right. I use Brave. I use either Chrome, Firefox, or uh, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> Who uses Microsoft Edge? <laughs> What's that? Some guy that when I was setting up my PC, um, the first time, the first PC, I was just watching some guy on YouTube doing configuring it. You know, once it's been been, been built and you're just launching Windows for the first time, and then in his process um, of his tutorial, he goes, and then what you need to do is go on to Microsoft Edge and use Microsoft Edge for the only reason it's there, and that's to download Google Chrome. <laughs> 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 and then once he's downloaded Google Chrome, he's like, well, now you want to close Microsoft Edge and probably never open it again. Never open it again. <laughs> until so you, true. Until you built your next PC. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Shall I bring on the, the last and lightweight one? Yeah, go on. So I thought we've kept this thing going with a bit of sport. So let's go with this. We've got the World Snooker Championship, which happened over this weekend, Bank Holiday weekend in the UK. Uh, Ronnie O. Sutherland claims record equal in seventh world title. So Ronnie won the seventh world title. Um, but that's not what the news is because obviously he can win any title he wants. He's matched Stephen Henry's uh, record of seven. And at the end, I don't know if you watched. Um, the bit at the end when he's celebrating everything and i think the host asked him uh what do you feel about sharing the seventh world title with henry um as in to say are you going to be retiring or are you going to go for the eighth and ronnie replied uh, we can share it for a year if that's all right with him <laughs> <laughs> you know something like watching him in this tournament he's probably the best i've ever seen him yeah he's a different he's breed of snooker player yeah like do you know it was 2020 he won it last right when he played karen wilson in the final yeah 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 he was uh, 2020 or was that last year no last year selby won oh yeah 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 um 
But in that 2021, it felt like it was just it was just there, like trolling the whole tournament, like right? because <laughs> he was coming out with like some outrageous stuff. Yeah, I remember he kept saying, "What was he saying?" I can't remember what he was saying. He, he, he kept saying it all the time. Ranking points. No. Was it his Q action? Oh, his Q power, something like that. Something like, that. but he just kept commenting on it. Yeah, the whole yeah, time. yeah. But I just felt like he was just it's, there just to just to be a troll in the interviews. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then end up winning the tournament like that. But then this time, I just feel like he's had like focus and he's just been smashing his opponents out of the water. And apparently, though, he's had some. Um, there's a documentary about him. Oh, is there? Yeah, I think one of the commentators mentioned it that he's got camera uh, cameras with him behind behind the scenes. Oh, they made a documentary of him this. Season. Yeah, for this tournament. Yeah. Oh well, no wonder he. Needed yeah, to. so he's on his A game for that tournament uh, for the cameras, I think. But without a doubt, I think he'll win it again next year. That actually backs up something that I saw after it. I was on for the on. The internet and social media looking at people's uh, reactions to his victory and seen someone saying did you watch the last the final no i didn't watch it someone was saying um because he sort of went so far ahead against trump and then someone said that he like purposely blew it out to make the final last longer um but no, now I'm... you've said that they're doing a the documentary it kind of makes sense because there were so many times when you just felt like, wow, has he just missed that? Or why, why is he, he's just careless when he could have just finished the game. Like he was on, he had first at 18, he was on 16, 17 for a while. All right. I'm going to watch, I'll watch the whole uh, match. Yeah. It was a quality. Yeah. I don't even know what I, I was busy on Monday daytime. And then last night, I forgot, I completely forgot all about it. And I woke up this morning and I was like, at the gym, and I saw it on the thing. I saw running on. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, oh, why did I have it on? If there's only one snooker I watch in a full year, it's the uh, World Snooker Championship final. Yeah, like, I've been watching it like, in, in the background or when I've got time. I, I've been watching all the matches, but then yeah. the final, I don't even know what happened. Like, just Bank Holiday Monday. I just completely forgot about it. Yeah, it's not usually on Bank Holiday Monday, is it? It's usually on the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, say I didn't do anything apart from watch snooker. Yeah, it was a one o'clock session, and then I had nothing. I was felt bored in between the afternoon and the evening. That's how like into the game I was. Uh, yeah, but well, he's. I think, uh, I think he. He's the greatest. He's he is the greatest of all time. Yeah. And when he wins that next world title, he's going to be like he'll get. He's gone down a legend then, like, I don't think he won't, yeah, he needs he won't to see be, a player like him for a long time. They put him in the bracket of, um, do you know, like, um, the top athletes. Because okay, he's yeah. had that many world um, or finals or world championship places, or he's done so well over that amount of time. He puts him, They put him up there with, like, Serena Williams and players like that. Just to say, oh, okay, yeah, he's as a sort of solo. It's a solo sport, like tennis is a solo sport. Yeah, with, with like the Tiger Woods and the, uh, I don't know many te tennis players, but the, yeah, I know what you mean. Like that caliber of, uh, yeah, and he's a. Uh, I'm glad we watched him live. Yeah, but I would probably you know, wouldn't we even. Should, we should uh, try get tickets for the Crucible. Yeah, I was saying that to Kate because we were watching it together yesterday. I said next year, I'm 100 percent just going to book. Because they might mm. not do the Crucible again. Oh, the Crucible's going to be the last one next year? Well, they're um, in debate. They're talking about... Might not even be ne they might not even be there next year. All right. Why? So I think the capacity of it is 900 people. Um, but they want the sport to grow. So, but and more people want to go and watch at the Crucible. So the only way they can let the sport grow is by opening up in a bigger yeah. venue getting a bigger venue mm. well, I thought they should... probably move down to london somewhere won't it i don't know would you say it's more of a northern sport or a 
Well, Ronnie's from Essex. I think it's just a British like all around. Because mm. I, I think Kyron's from Midlands, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. I'm not sure. I think so. I don't know where Trump's from either. Judd Trump. So going into this world championship, was Ronnie ranked number two and Trump was ranked number four? Yeah. Who's ranked number one? I don't know. I don't know. Be Ronnie now, wouldn't it? Oh, who was ranked number one before? Yeah, going into the tournament. Was it Neil Robertson? Was it? Or was he three? He might have been three. Um, one sec. But yeah, I'm glad we got to see Ronnie play. Oh, it's all updated now. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, oh. So I can't see. I'll show you what it is now anyway. It's kind of interesting. So Ronnie's... Ah, so probably Selby was number one before. Mm. Yeah, he must have been. Selby won it last year, so... He might... Well, it's based on this season anyway, isn't it? No, it is, yes. Yeah. Um... Higgins. It's mad how these old school uh, players are still. Class of 90, isn't it? They're called. Yeah. Who is it? Ronnie Higgins and Williams. Ronnie Higgins, Williams, Hawkins. Bingham? I think Bingham's in it as well. Bingham was in the final last year with Selby, wasn't he? I can't even remember the final last year. I do like the way uh, Mark Selby plays sneaker, even though people say it's boring, but... I like it, yeah. Like, it's like a game of chess when he plays. The game yesterday was um, good because I, I don't I wouldn't say Trump's good at safety, playing safety, and I don't think Ronnie's good at playing safeties, so... Whenever there was half a chance, they won't go for a safety. They'll just go for a yeah. shot. Like that is exciting snooker to watch. But then yeah. I still appreciate the way Mark Selby plays. Where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like you have to sort of be in the mood to watch that though. Yeah, you got to sit there and uh, properly get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there was a good shot um, yesterday where Trump made an aggressive safety shot. So oh, okay. I'll just quickly describe it to you. So all the balls were clumped together at the bottom of the table, three or four reds. And what he did was he broke all three, all four reds up and then went into a safe position. So yeah, it okay. makes Ronnie's shot that much harder because he's trying to hide a ball when there's the, all the balls are spread. Yeah. Spread out. yeah. But, um, Do you know what I want to say? Uh, Ronnie on Joe Rogan. I wanted to see it for ages. Does he even do podcasts? I don't even know. I think he'll be good on it because uh, Joe Rogan's... I know Joe Rogan's a pool player, but I, oh, think yeah. be, I think it'd be an interesting podcast. He's talked about Ronnie before on his podcast. I've heard him. Has he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He knows... Because he watches a shitload of pool, Joe Rogan. Yeah. So obviously he must have come across Nuka. Did you watch that TV series where Ronnie goes around America playing pool? Yeah. Playing American pool, isn't it? Good that. I was watching it again recently. <laughs> he just slaps everyone up. Yeah. There are some sick players, though. In there are some good players. I've been watching just that like, English pool on YouTube. Mm. Is it good? No. Not as good as Snooker, but just it was like a quick watch. I think some guy had like, I'll send it to you. He had 15 seconds and all of his balls were still on the table because it was on a timer. He had 15 seconds and he came back to the table, potted all of his balls and potted the black in 15 seconds. All right. Bloody hell. <laughs> That's mental. So. You might get him on. Yeah, it'd be good if he does. All right. Should you got we, something uh, else as well? Are we calling it? You got something else now? I'll show you just just 15 second video quickly before we go. It's not 15 second. I've completely lied. It's 30, but it's still wicked to watch. 
it's it's a big big ask to try and clear them away in 30 seconds well maybe, maybe it's the golden break so it's so got to be the interesting thing at this it's there hey balls in motion he broke i tell you what he's taking a few off the table here jesus wow these are all on can he find a way out in 20 seconds he'll go close you know he might go close this is a six red shootout sort of pace this will go very close no he's in he's he's he's, he's good here <laughs> 12 seconds. This is crazy. Oh, Gareth Potts, you couldn't, could you? This is ridiculous. Wow. Oh, wow. my goodness wow. me. Wow. You are wow. joking. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. They did it for the drawer as well. So it's far, far after that. Uh, I don't have a clue, is it? Yeah. I think he's, uh, that was Gareth Poole's playing. Gareth Potts, sorry. Yeah, because he's on yellows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> mad. It takes me about 15 seconds to do one shot. 30 yeah, seconds even. It shows though how much easier pool is for a professional than it is, than snooker. Yeah. When I've been playing snooker and then I go on uh, a few frames of snooker, then I go and play pool. Pool just feels like a kid's game. Oh, are you better at pool? Yeah. I do like snooker though. But... All right. Should we call it? We certainly will. It was good talking to you. Yeah, it was good. It's been on the uh, production. Catch you next week. Apologies for the uh, break.